not have female bodies. The church is a him. It's not a, it's always referred to as a his throughout the Bible. Never referred to as her. The church is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now Israel is referred to as a woman. And but the church has always been a his body. We are the body of Christ. Christ is a man. We are the body of Christ. Now, I say all that to say this. I want you to go with me over. He's talking to, about Jesus. Go with me over to Isaiah 53. And everyone is familiar with this scripture. Isaiah 53, 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form or, nor comeliness. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a plant that's been starved of water or nutrition, but it looks very poorly. Well, Christ, it says he had no power. Comeliness means power. He had no strength. He wasn't bold. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. When they saw Christ come as a carpenter's son, he wasn't a, a strong, beautiful, powerful man. He was a weak carpenter's son. He had no power. He had no grit. He had no boldness because he came as an humble carpenter's son. But when he comes back in Revelation 19, 11, he comes back with boldness. He comes back on the horse. And he comes back almighty and all-powerful, king of kings and lord of lords. But when he came, let's read on in Isaiah because this is what I'm showing you. I told you, first of all, that God gave him the power. God's the one that gave him all of these things. But read what it says here. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and an acquainted and acquainted with gifts. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. The people of that day, when they saw Christ, they had no desire to go to him to be his friend they had no desire to associate with him because he was not what they were expecting. You see, the Jews at this particular time was looking for a king to come deliver them from Rome. Herod had, the, the sixth head of the beast had taken power over Israel. The sixth head of the beast, which was the Roman Empire, had taken power over Israel. And they were looking for the Messiah to come and deliver them. Because they kept saying, when are you going to deliver us? When are we going to, what signs are you going to show us that you're going to deliver us if you be the Messiah? They were looking for somebody to come riding in on a white horse, praise God, with a sword drawn uh, and ready to go into battle and deliver them from the hand of the enemy. When are you going to do it? But you see, this man came riding in on a burrow. He had nothing. He had nothing. He had been beaten and spat upon and torn when they saw him right before he went to Calvary. He was weakling. He was a weakling. He had no valor. He had no grit. He had no boldness. He wasn't the Messiah that they were looking for. And so people didn't want to be around him. Other than when he would do a miracle, that would draw a crowd real quick when he would do something uh, uh, miraculous. But the average person didn't want to be around him because the, he had no, they had no desire to be around this weakling. They were looking for the Messiah. Surely he hath borne our griefs. And when you look at borne, it means to bear. Surely he has taken away our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. You know, the Bible says it pleased God to see him suffer on Calvary or to see him go through these things. Why did it please God? Because God sent him here to do that. He sent his only begotten son because he cared enough about you. He cared enough about me 
that, praise God, he would send his only begotten. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, I want you to see here, with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Every single person in here has gone astray. I don't care who you are. You have backslid. You've gone astray. You've done away with your walk with God. You've sinned. For the Bible says in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Every single one of us has sinned. Every single one of us has walked away. But God is telling us today that even though we walked away, he so loved each one of us that it pleased him to send his only begotten son knowing what he was going to have to go through. Because, you know, God even had to turn his head away from sin because he couldn't look upon sin. But he knew what his son was going to go through, and it pleased him. And he was wounded for our transgression, and we like sheep have gone astray. Every single one of us, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. The sins of, our, uh, of every one of us has been laid upon Christ at that time. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as the sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his own mouth. Now, Jesus could have spoken and called down all the angels of heaven. Jesus could have spoken and killed everybody there that day that was hindering him. Now, I want you to think, if you've got the power to overcome the enemy, and yet the enemy is coming and beating you and kicking you and, and spitting on you and plucking your beard out and doing everything he can do to you. And you've got the power to call down the force that would just annihilate all of them. I don't believe there's anyone in here that probably would not use that power to cause it to stop, especially when the pain got so great. Because when the pain gets so great now, we look for a pill. Or we look for a doctor. We just cannot stand pain. Now, we're talking about being beaten with cat and nine tails. We're talking about beating with whips. We ripped the flesh off the body. He could have stopped it in a second. That first stripe, I'd have been screaming out. <laughs> the first time that whip hit me, I'd have probably been calling out, I need help. But you see, Jesus sit there and took it. Why? Because he wanted to be obedient to the Father. He didn't come down here to do this for you and I. He came down to do it for his father. His father commanded him to go do it. He said, I came not to do my own will. Because he even prayed, Lord, Father, if, if, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to have to go to Calvary. I don't want to have to suffer. But he said, no, not my will, but thine be done. He loved his father so much that he wanted to do the will of God. And church, that's where we've got to get to. We've got to get to the point that we love God so much, we love our Heavenly Father so much that we want to do His will. We want His will to be done in our lives, not ours. Because if you follow flesh, you're going to end up in sin because flesh is sin. Flesh serves sin. And you're going to be chastised in the flesh. But when you follow Jesus Christ, you have no way to go but accept up. Because Jesus is not going to mislead you. He's not going to misguide you. He's not going to misdirect you. He's going to show you what's the truth. And he's going to guide you in truth. He's going to guide you in righteousness. And so this is why today that we have to sell out to Christ. That's what God is, is talking about here. Where does he have to take us to to get us to sell out? How far do we have to go? How far does he have to take us before we say, Lord, I've had enough? How far does he have to take us before we say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done? He's saying, I'm going to take you down that road. I'm going to allow you to walk down that road. And when you hit the brick wall, then you'll turn to me. And I'm telling you, church, this is where God is today. He's looking for the people that will take up the cross and follow him. He's looking for the people that's already been against that brick wall. I've told my kids many times, you keep running the way you're going. And when you hit the brick wall, look at the right-hand corner up there, and you'll see a cracked brick. That's where your daddy hit it uh, because I've hit it before and I know that when you hit that brick wall it's no fun uh, but I uh, tell you also that when I hit that brick wall Jesus Christ was there when I got down and knelt down to eat with the swine uh, the Holy Ghost was there and he said listen why are you here uh, when your father's got more uh, when you can go to your father 